Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks for joining us for our all patched up series where we go back and look at games that have since had patches to the performance or the visuals or other aspects of the title since launch to see if perhaps that might change whether they're worth picking up now and if the developers have done enough to address any issues. Today we're going to look at CrossCode as that's had a patch already as well as Summer in Mara, Void Bastards, Rhyme, and possibly the most requested one of all, Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden, which when it launched looked like it had been regurgitated and was an all-round mess in the visual department. Do make sure you check out our sales video if you haven't done so so far, it's the weekly list where we give away a free game. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoy the content and let me know down below what are some titles that you would like to see me revisit. I've already got Decay of Logos on my list, but I'm sure there are some others that you'd like me to go back and have a look at. With that said, has any of the performance improved? Well, let's find out. First up then, we'll start with CrossCode. Now at launch, performance for the most part was okay, it was pretty decent, but there were some areas where it absolutely tanked and it would go below 30 FPS, which is really the acceptable level, anything below that and it's just not great. I had some interesting conversations down in the comment section and hats off to the developer, what I think most people don't realise is the amount of coding work they actually had to do to get this game running on the Nintendo Switch, even down I believe to create in their own compiler to interpret JavaScript and then recode it on the fly before you ever get to see any of the actual rendering happen. So there's a ton of work that went into getting it to work, but it just wasn't quite there yet. Now, the patch has definitely had a positive impact. As you can see from the most troublesome area, that hub town, frame rates now absolutely do not go below 30 FPS. They kind of hit the floor of 30 and they lock out at 30. They haven't allowed it to kind of dip down below that, but they have allowed it to remain uncapped so it can go above that which is a mm, interesting choice. Perhaps they should have just capped it at 30 and been done with it because there are still a few minor stutters. I do think there is perhaps a little more work they can do, but we're seeing between 50 and 60 FPS much more frequently now, which is great. And they did that, I think, with the launch day patch. As it stands, we're at version 1.06, and like it is now, I would probably have added maybe a point or two onto the visual section of the score. If you've not played CrossCode, it's an amazing game, very good indeed, with one of the best stories for an RPG, and an ARPG at that, that I've played in a long time. Very good indeed, well worth picking up. On to Summer in Mara then, I'm not sure whether we reviewed version 1.0 or 1.1, but either way I thought I'd give it a quick spin and nothing's changed, nothing's changed at all. You're generally locked out at 30 FPS for the vast majority of your playtime. Islands and sailing are fine, it's only when you get to the main island of Quailos. Quailos? Quayleg? Quayleg? <laughs> Isn't that the, uh, the mutant off of Total Recall? <laughs> one of those it tanks down to at times 20 21 22 completely unacceptable in my opinion not good enough they need to work on it you spend a lot of time a lot of time doing fetch quests and you run through that area so much it just becomes a real eyesore it's not the greatest game in all opinion in all honesty they could have done a lot more with it and hopefully after a few more patches we can give this one a revisit but for me still it'll be a wait for a sale Void Bastards is a game that I absolutely loved when it released. It reminded me of a little bit like Red Dwarf meets a roguelike FPS and there's loads of great humour in here, good voice acting, excellent mechanics, super addictive. You go on different runs to scavenge loot and build new items and things. It's, it's just really compelling, a great game. But unfortunately, again, it was tanking down to around about 15, 20 FPS in certain areas. And again, they've patched it and it is much better than it was. It's still not 60 FPS at all times. It's it's still uncapped, which is slightly strange, but it's much more stable than it was at launch, which is nice. 
I can't see any real change in terms of visual quality, it was never bad to begin with. Aliasing on objects is generally quite good with things looking like they've been smoothed out nicely and I do enjoy that unique art style. Load times remain fairly consistent, there's no real issue there but the one area I think a lot of people were wondering about was whether or not the huge dips and stutters had been removed and as far as I can tell from this playthrough they've certainly done quite a bit to mitigate those issues. This is a very good game, I'd recommend buying this at full price or on a sale, but if performance was your concern, then be concerned no longer. When Rhyme launched with version 1.0, performance was atrocious. Like it was, it was really quite bad. And the main performance issue was the actual visual clarity. It was so blurry. It was just a blurry mess. And there were some janky stutters and other bits and bobs. It couldn't hold its 30. It was, it just wasn't great. And it was a real shame because it's such a lovely title. Now we're on to version 1.02, and as it stands, as of right now, it's a much more pleasant experience. You're looking at 30 locked for the vast majority, and it will occasionally fluctuate a little but it's not the mess it was at the start. The main area that has really improved is the clarity of the visual as well as some of the more major bugs have been removed. It's not completely flawless, I did hit a few mid-game issues and stutters again but that overall visual clarity and performance are greatly improved and I wouldn't be terrified anymore of recommending you pick this one up. If you're not sure what it is, well, you wash up on an island, have to solve lots of different puzzles, but it's definitely got that special something that lots of games try and achieve, but most of them fail miserably. There's an overarching story that ties the whole experience together, so by the time you reach the end of the game, it's about seven hours long, you still might get a bit of a shock, and it's got a lovely little twist that achieved a satisfying ending, unlike so many titles that we play these days. Just have your handkerchief ready. Last but not least, it's Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. Now the good man himself, Chicken Perm, reviewed this one for us way back in the day. And when he reviewed it, his main gripe, as I'm sure you can guess, was the visual performance. It was just a blurry, muddy mess. And since then, it's seen a few patches. We're on version 4.0.23280. <laughs> Where do they come up with these numbers? And it's certainly better than it was. Although there are times where it seems to lock out at 28 frames per second, for the vast majority of docked play, you're looking at 30 FPS, and it actually feels much more responsive and smooth than it did at launch. There are much less game-breaking bugs than there were before. It's still not bug-free by any means, but it's a title that's vastly improved in that regard. In docked mode, I'd say if that's the way you play the vast majority of your game, you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It doesn't look terrible. In handheld mode, for me, it's still too blurry. It hasn't seen the same level of improvement. Performance in handheld is fine. It's ticking along nicely. It seems relatively smooth, and I didn't notice any huge stutters or issues, but that blurry visual, when you're playing in an awesome post-apocalyptic world with these zones, a la Stalker, if you remember that game, amazing, you want to be able to see everything nice and clearly, and the only way I could enjoy it on Switch, to be honest, is if I play in docked mode. Would I pick this one up now? Well, if it was on sale, I would certainly enjoy it. I mean, I would play the vast majority of, of it in docked anyway, and, and I'd have a good time with it. Switching over to handheld, it's bearable because the performance is solid, but the visual is certainly going to cause a few people some, uh, well, what would you call it? <laughs> some headaches as they squint at the screen. So that's it for this week. We've looked at five titles. Hopefully we'll look at five titles again in the next episode. But do let me know, please, down in the comments, which games would you like me to go back and visit? Or perhaps we've never looked at them before. Maybe there's some titles that you want to know about that would work in this series. If you're new to the channel, consider sticking around if you enjoy it. Once again, a big thanks for everyone who helped us get to 100k. And we've had our YouTube play button turn up, so we'll do a video on that one when Glenn and I get together on Friday for pizza night. As always, a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. If you want to join them, then please do support us over on Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!